That's the feeling we've all had. Now new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. Hopefully it's not too windy out right now, but um, I'm starting to chip away the plaster so that I can put this ridge plate up here that the roof will be uh, connected to, to connect it to the house. Um, and I'm kind of sad, it's kind of sad to uh, chip away my beautiful plaster, but it's kind of nice to see what's underneath it and see that the straw bales and everything have held up. This burlap is kind of like brand new. It's definitely not any water damage happening underneath my plaster, so the house is pretty intact. It's been five, six years or so since I put the uh, scratch coat of plaster up there. And now I have to chip, I have to take off some of this excess uh, bale uh, straw because the, the bales are sticking out too far and I want the the plate to be right up against these uh, these posts here. Now I'm getting to what is probably the most complicated part of this project, which is to figure out how to uh, make this part of the house, uh, this connection here, waterproof. And so what I'm going to be doing is installing flashing above the roofing tin, and then I need to lime plaster around the flashing to fill in this gap because uh, I've exposed the straw bale wall underneath. And so I'm going to put a scratch coat of lime plaster on and um, then put the flashing on. I have to put these closures in here which are like these plastic foam things. There's some over here. And I've already mixed up some lime plaster so these things just sit in here and fill in these gaps. The flashing goes over it and then I've got to fill in this with plaster and I'm hopefully going to finish off the plaster with a finished coat of flash plaster that will line up with this and I'll put some more um, fresco, which is the pigment here. I'll do some of that to, to fill in this gap here uh, so that it's continuous with color. And hopefully I can reproduce the same, the same shades of color. I've already mixed up the lime plaster and now I just need to wet this down to get it ready to take some fresh lime plaster. You have to wet down the surface so that it doesn't lick all the moisture out of the new coat of lime plaster. Just getting the lime plaster to cure is all about keeping it moist. doing a little bit of cleanup. It kind of makes a mess when you use lime plaster. And I need to clean up these spots where the closure is going to be sticking so that it's going to have something to adhere to. Clean the surface.
just a scratch coat that I'm putting on here. I plan to put a finished coat over this and use a trowel to smooth it. And then I'll put the uh, fresco on it, which is the pigmented layer. It's got a pretty big overhang here. It's about two feet of overhang on this side. So it's not gonna get a lot of rain, only if we have some kind of driving wind and snow uh, and rain would it actually be able to push up against gravity and push back in there, but that's why I got those closures there. There'd have to be over an inch of rain being pushed up in there to actually get it through the closures. Hey, so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. In the next video I'll be demonstrating the Lime Plaster Fresco, which is the pigment that makes my house so bright colored. So if you want to see that whole process, don't miss my next video.